Hey, Bass Geek here. We're out on Top Secret Lake P. We are hoping we're going to catch some topwater bass. We're hoping we're going to catch some deep bass. I got my buddy Mike with me. You guys have seen him. He he caught a four pound, 12 ounce smallmouth on South Holston earlier this year. Uh, he's back in and we're going to get to uh, do a little bit of fishing today. He's actually going to do a little bit of camera work for me because we don't remember if he's got a license or not. So no fishing for Mike. Sorry, Mike. But wow. hey, you know, we follow the rules. That's just how we do it. But uh, we're going to get him a fishing license so he can pick up a rod and reel and catch a few next time we go out. All that being said, hey, I'm going to tell you the conditions of the day. Listen, these bass are just now moving out. I think the shad spawn on this lake is finally over. The last time I was out here, which was about a week, maybe a few days, week and three days, the water temp was still only 73 degrees. We got out here today and first thing this morning, I mean, we were out before safe light and it was 78 so perfect water temps the water temps are rising we've had some good warm weather and you know that's really going to push them out there deep so we hope they're going to be out there uh, suspended to be honest with you that's what i like that's how i like to catch them is suspended but uh, if they're on the bottom, they're on the bottom and we can catch them doing that too. We have got a ton of rods and reels set out. So we are gonna do a little bit of everything and that's kind of summer fishing, man. You know, sometimes you go to spot A and you throw three, four, five things at them. You go to spot B, throw three, four, five things at them. Go to spot C, throw three, four, five, and then you finally catch three or four. That's how it works. All right, let's see how the morning goes. throw top water they're right in that top water range before I get too far in there Watch out, Hall. Oh, he's barely hooked and I'm going to come right. Easy, easy, easy. Easy. Oh, well, I probably should have got the net, shouldn't I? There we go, gentlemen. I seen them on the scope come up to it. Oh, he was hooked better than I thought. Good right there. I mean, he probably ain't the best. All right, so we got the first one of the morning. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. You can't have this. They don't make it. You need to go to Lornette. This is a Hedden Spook Junior. It has just got a one knocker. This time of year, they love this thing. First thing in the morning when it's nice, flat, and calm, they love this thing. Uh, the paint shop, you need to go. They've got some killer ones out there right now. Uh, some really good designs clear water. This is a uh, herringbone kind of pattern, but that's what we're catching them on right now Good little fat, healthy fish. Always make sure you fill their bellies. Look in their mouths. Check and see what they've been eating. These have been eating shad. Boy, right here's a big bunch of them. Feel good. 
Yeah, you see him. Let's see what they think of it. Gosh, there they go chasing something on the bottom. What the hell does that go to? Killing me. Okay. Oh, got it. Yeah. Yep, that's what feels pretty good. I ain't even seen him yet. Dang. Yeah, that's pretty good. Boy, look at that shad he just kicked up. Look here, guys. I'm almost positive I caught this bass about two weeks ago. He had his side beat up like that. Another good one. You know, we ain't catching no toads, but you know, twos, two and a half, threes. This time, Strike King. Uh, you know, we just put an eighth ounce belly weight. They were busting back here. We let them settle down for a minute, but that's caffeine shad, ghost shad. So again, you know, we ain't catching toads, but twos, twos and a halves. Uh, trying to upscale, but. We're, we're catching some. There's a little bunch right there. Oh my God. About 10 foot down. Yeah. That's some little ones right there. Yeah. Some, some little ones. Got it. Yeah, I'm coming up and eat it. That was a quick. <laughs> uh, like I said, a bunch of little ones. Come on up here, little buddy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stop digging, stop digging. Stop digging, come on, I'm gonna get you in the boat. You changed your lure on that one. I did. So, now guys, they're up shallow, like probably five, 10 feet. This is a Domeki Armor Shad five inch. You know, uh, my son-in-law come out here the other day, he took my advice and was fishing the bigger one because we're at the tail end i think it's finally over of the shad spawn this is one of my favorite colors this is what i caught my biggest smallmouth on the three inch version this is the art Demiki armor shad now i'm not using the Demiki head because i don't have any one eighths when they're up super shallow and it's dead slick calm and there's no current an eighth is the smallest like a sixteenth uh, it's a, it's almost crappy size a 16th or 32nd to keep it up there we've seen a group of them there's about eight of them just some small ones you know that's probably pound and a quarter you know nothing great but we're just out here throwing at them and uh you know as you can tell man we're catching them on everything right now they're just bunched up feeding on shad all right let's see if we can catch them more All right, guys, so we found another group of bass up here. They are grouped up on a creek channel ledge right before the swing. That is a place you should always check 
sometimes right before that channel swing, the current could come down and wash that off and, and create a little bit of a hard bottom. So we got some out here. We're gonna put the scope down really mainly. We're, we're using the scope to really target where they are, but mainly what we're doing is using the scope to just target where they are and then we're just kind of fishing. We're just kind of fan casting just making sure we're in the area or if we spread them out we're giving them a few minutes to group back up uh that's really what the live scope's doing for us today it's not necessarily that we're just picking off certain fish because they're grouped up we're and that's what you want during the summer when it's hot you want that competition the more bass that are in a group in a ball the better off you are and the more likely you're going to get bit all right let's see if we can put some more of them in the boat Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yours is too. That's a good looking boat. I'm ready to drink this one out. Oh, really? I told you I said, uh, I want charcoal gray. And I said, I want purple pin. And he called me back like that evening and told me, he said, man, I found a silver paint with a purple plate. You want that? I was like, it's up to you. I said, as long as you don't think it don't look too bad. But I like that color on a boat right there. I, he's the one that designed this. You know, I did a video to where. I was going to let everybody vote. Yeah, I seen that. And, yep, boy, he come up off the bottom out of 100. Oh. And, uh, just watch out. Oh, oh God, there's a huge one following. Probably the smallest one of the day, but caught him on the good old ledge head underspin. We got a uh, Ramsey bait, uh, three, 3.5, and a... Uh, I can just call it natural shad. Just look at it on the website. Uh, half ounce, slow rolling. Hey guys, anytime you see me out on the water, you always know, come talk to me. Don't worry if I'm fishing. You know, just don't come right across where I'm fishing at. <laughs> but yeah, come talk to me because, uh, you know, I love to meet you, you geeks out there. And uh, so, got to meet one. I'll let him introduce himself. Ray Yuri. I'm here in Wise, Virginia. Uh, and enjoy hank here he does a good job uh shooting some videos and you know gives us some knowledge you know never knew about an underspan until hank was talking about it and you know i've had good luck out of it he's, he's a good guy it's uh man i appreciate you you need any more stickers or anything yeah, I'll take i got a couple <laughs> back here shoo geeks let me tell you this was a fun day man i appreciate my buddy mike coming out and playing cameraman for me i hope that really up the quality of the video. We'll kind of get used to that a little bit as it goes on. Uh, and, you know, he's not always gonna be doing it because he's got to work, but he actually took a uh, television productions class back with me like when way back in the 90s, all right? Anyway, you know, I love to go out and fish for suspended bass during the summertime. A lot of guys will pass those over, but you're making a huge mistake. And I've been doing it way before the advent of live scope. So I can tell you how to do it without having fancy electronics. And 90% of the time, what I like to do is I like to find those deeper creeks that's got some good points, some good channel swings. So while everybody else is banging those uh, main lake points and banks, which are still great places, a lot of times as the summer comes in, you can find some smaller schools that are untouched and they're fun to go fish for. So if you don't have special electronics, look, all you need is, is a 2D graph. I mean, just go and, you know, hash it. Just go drive around when you see arches, you know they're there. Pay attention, good maps are great and you don't even need a side graph that's got good maps. Get your phone, get the Navionics app, download it, study it, look at it. If you don't have Navy Onyx or, or the lakes or ponds you're fishing don't have a good map, then all you need to do is go graph it. And if you ain't got graphs, hey, throw a three quarters ounce football jig or a Carolina rig. Get out there and drag, take your time. That's how I started. So for anybody that says it don't take skills, trust me, I got plenty of those. I've been doing this way longer than the graphs were pretty and fancy. I've earned what I got. All that being said, 
Does it make it easier? Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to be able to target them directly because I'm not having to fan cast. And that's what you got to do. You got to learn how to fan cast. And this is a lot of times why people don't like fishing for suspended bass because you got to learn. You can't just drop it to the bottom and drag it on bottom in an easy fashion. You got to go out there. You got to fan cast. You got to learn the fall rate of the bait and you got to count it down. And we'll do full on videos on how to do that. Man, I had such a good time today. It was good to be out with my buddy. It's good to be out on one of my favorite lakes. Get out there early. I know a lot of guys like to night fish, and if you fish in tournaments, they like to start in the evening and go. But I'm telling you, the best bite at night is from about 3 o'clock on. So for me, I like to get out there right before daylight and fish till about noon when all the nut jobs are on the lake. You know what I'm saying? All right. As always, questions, comments in the comment section below. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notification so you can join the 100% Watch Squad. And all that means is just watch the videos when they come out. Watch it all the way through. That's pure and simple. Easy, free, maybe a little cheesy. But as always, you geeks rock.